Hey everybody, Dr. Baker here. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to build and calibrate a response model from complete scratch, aka raw data, that's in Excel. We're going to set up our worksheet, we're going to calculate the error of our forecast model, and then we're going to use Solver to calibrate our model. In this video, I'm going to be moving very fast. This video is merely, merely a replication of several other videos and in-class lectures that I've already generated. Here though, I want to start from like the very, very base. There's no graphs, there's no charts, there's no spaces to help you sort of build it or work along the tutorial yourself. You're just stuck with raw data. But all of the skills that we're going to be applying today are exactly the same skills that we've been trading the whole time. I will be moving fast. So if you're following along here and want to practice, just be aware that you might have to pause and examine what I'm doing. I'll narrate as I go. Okay. First things first, let's take a look at our raw data. This is some rows of data representing Pokemon Go users. We know what region they're from. We know the in-app purchases they made last year in dollars. This is going to be our dependent variable, the thing we want to try to predict. And we know a few other things about these users, whether or not they joined a raid, whether they're an Android user, and the number of hours they've been active. If we go down here, we'll notice that we also have a forecast data set. We also have here information about different users region, whether or not they joined a raid, whether or not they're Android users and the number of hours they've been active. But of course, since it's a forecast, we do not yet know what they're likely to purchase next year. Our goal is to use this raw data from last year about some people to build a forecast model that builds a forecast for these new users for the next year. Okay. First things first, what is our dependent variable? It's in-app purchases. I will make it a color only so I can see it easier. There's no reason I have to make it a color. And then what am I going to be using for my independent variables or my predictors? In this example, I'm arbitrarily deciding that I'm going to just use hours active. So that'll be an input. And I'm also going to use whether or not someone's an Android user. And I'm also going to make this a simple linear model. Again, the choice of making a linear model rather than a logistic model or a power series model or something else is my decision. Um, at this point, there's no rhyme or reason why I particularly chose a linear model. So the form of my linear model is as follows. Now, what I'm about to type here has nothing to do with what we're actually going to build. I just want to make sure we can see what I'm aiming for. I want my prediction. So that's my dollars. is going to be equal to beta zero, that's our y-intercept, plus beta one, that's a parameter, uh, whether or not someone's an Android user, plus beta two times of the hours they've been active. So in this particular example, I have two inputs, whether or not they're an Android user and their hours active, and I have three parameters I'm going to have to calibrate to build a prediction model. Okay, delete that. So the first thing I have to do is I need to make a working space. I literally need to just set up a little space where I can put my parameters. So this is arbitrary. I don't need to actually write this. I just need to have numerical values. And we're just going to start with zero for now. And each one of these little cells here represents the parameter values for my beta zero, beta one, and beta two. Eventually, I'm going to need to set these to smart numerical values. But for now, I'll just start at zero. Here in the next column, I will call this my prediction. So this will be my prediction for purchases. Okay. And then according to my linear model, I simply type in my equation. So my prediction for this particular person is equal to beta zero. That's my parameter there. And I'll hit F4 to make sure that it stays absolutely referenced. Also, I have a parameter for beta one. Multiply that by the input, this person is not an Android user, so E3 here, plus beta 2, which I'll also fix, and, and then multiply that by their hours active, the other input. That's my function. All right. And of course, my purchase here for this person right now is zero because all my parameters are set at zero. Completely arbitrarily, I'm going to change these values. There's no rhyme or reason to this at this point. I'm just making stuff up. You can pick any values you want right there as well. And now I've made these predictions for each one of my individuals. I can drag my function down. And sure enough, here's my predictions. Ooh, they're pretty bad right now. They're negative. 
but that's okay. This is just a starting point. I'm going to be using Solver later to actually calibrate these parameters for me. So how wrong is my model? Whenever we want to calculate error, we have two common choices. We can either use squared errors or we can use absolute errors. In this particular example, I will calculate absolute errors. So what is the absolute error between this value here? The person actually spent $30 and I thought they were going to spend negative $38. That's rather silly, but we don't need to worry about that just yet. Well, to calculate the absolute error, we can make a simple function that just says ABS. That's the absolute function, right? And if we didn't know this, we could have Googled absolute values in Excel, and we would have found that the ABS function is what we needed. Take this minus that. So our reality versus our prediction, and that gives us our absolute error. We were off in total by $68.5 for this person. And we can just proceed to drag this down to make sure we calculate our absolute errors for everybody. Now, how do we synthesize these absolute errors into one single number? Well, we usually use MAE. Okay. We could put MAE anywhere on our spreadsheet. I just happen to have placed it right here. And MAE in particular is simply the average of the absolute errors. So I can just use an average function of all the absolute error values. There's my mean absolute error. And I will just add a color to it just so I know I'm focusing on that. So now what is my goal? My goal here is to tweak these beta parameters that I picked arbitrarily to start with, such that by tweaking these, it reduces my overall absolute error. So let's see if I switch this to instead of negative 0.3, maybe like 0.1 positive. Oh, wow. Even that small adjustment drastically improves my absolute error. So clearly the parameters right now are better than they were previously, but I would like to make them ideal. That is, I would like these values to be set so that when I um, plug these parameter values in, my mean absolute error, how wrong my model is, is as low as possible. I can use Solver to do that for me. So I simply go to Solver. hit the reset button here, reset all just so I'm starting from a blank slate. Okay. So what's my objective? And this objective here is to select the MAE. And what was my goal? Well, my goal is to try to minimize that. I want to get it as low as possible. What variable cells do I change? Well, I change these three here. Those were the ones that I'm allowed to play with. And then I need to uncheck this, make unconstrained variables not negative. Uh, these values could be possibly negative, these parameters. So that's, I need to allow for that. And I can just hit solve. Ta-da! Solver has converged to the current solution. All constraints are satisfi satisfied. And we're quite happy. With these particular parameter values, we have lowered our mean absolute error as low as possible. And we now have our predictions. And a whole bunch of decimal points. Holy moly. We can easily reduce that, though. Great. So now... I now have a literal prediction model, right? I can literally say that my predicted dollars is equal to, and I'm going to not write all the decimals out. I hope you don't mind. 8.4 plus negative 2.78 times Android user plus 0.15 times hours active. Now, I only wrote this here just so that you can see it on the screen. This is useless for Excel. This is me just typing essentially text. I can't interact with this equation. But we can now see the effect of Android user and ours uh, active, ooh, typo there, active. And what can we interpret? Well, since the hours active parameter is positive, literally that's interpreted as, as hours active goes up, so does the predict uh, predicted amount of spend. For a particular user and then for android user i notice that the parameter is negative and well a one means they are an android user so if i plugged a one in here meaning they're android my predicted dollars go down so according to this model at least uh, android users all else equal are predicted to spend less than an ios or non-android uh, user okay now we can't really do anything with that function i just wrote that out so we can see it together what we want to do 
is we want to build our predictions down here in our forecast, right? We built this model so that we can use it to make predictions about people in the future. So how do we do this? Well, I go here into my blank cell here for C35, where I want to put my forecast. And I literally use the function that I already previously built. So it's equal to this parameter up here in K2. That's my y-intercept. Plus beta 1, that's whether or not they're an Android user, times. And now this case, uh, whether or not this person is an Android user is, of course, in their row here. So that's why I know about this individual plus the parameter for hours active times the input for hours active. And there we go. That's my forecast for this individual. And I can drag this function down or double click here to propagate this function. Great. So what have I learned? Uh, I don't really know if my forecast at this point is good or bad, right? I won't know how well I did until I observe how much these people actually spent. But the forecast alone is important to a marketer, right? We need these numbers to take action. For example, even just scrolling through this, doing no fancy analysis whatsoever, I can see according to this, these two individuals in Europe appear to be very potentially valuable customers. And it looks like despite them being Android users, they're very highly active users, which explains why we've predicted them to be worth quite a bit. Okay, so we did a little quick speed run here, starting from complete raw data, specifying a type of response model. We could have built other types, but we built a linear model using Android and hours active. We built the predictions out. We calculated the errors. We calculated the mean absolute error. And then we used Solver to calibrate our parameters and create our model, which then allowed us to build our forecasts. We just did a quick speed run of the exact same things that we've been practicing on other spreadsheets uh, throughout this module. But hopefully this sort of starting at the raw standpoint uh, helps you see how to build these yourself. Cheers.